I don't expect you to have it all figured out ahead of time. It's not lost on me that you're busy. And you have a million other things going before the event. So let's just use that rehearsal time for what it's there for, which is just figuring it all out. How are entrepreneurs like us daring bravely to build a stage, ditch the sweatpants, and step up to the mic? How do we create our own transformative events so we can get our message out into the world in a bigger way that's not only profitable, but it's actually something we can be proud of? That's the question. And the answers are inside this podcast. My name is Sarah Pfeiffer. Welcome to Green Room Central. Have you ever thought rehearsals are expensive? So we're not doing them. <laughs> well, then this is for you. Because we're Rehearsals, they reduce stress. They are a massive sign of respect to your team and to your presenters. And they allow you to focus on what matters in the moment, which is showing up and serving your guests. So I'm going to give you three reasons why you need to start considering investing in rehearsals. So let's get into it. First, why are they even so expensive? Well, the first is in order to do a rehearsal in the space with the equipment and the team that you're going to be using for the event, you're paying for the space, you're paying for the team, you're paying for the equipment. You're also talking about your the cost of your own team and time, like your own personal time. So I get it. They're expensive. It's a huge investment. And I think you should still do them. It's a sign of respect. And I say that because when your presenters, your guests, your team, your vendors are all doing it on the fly for the first time in the pressure cooker that is an event. An event naturally creates this environment where it is a little bit stressful because there's time pressure. Well, it's a sign of respect to your presenters to give them the how-to, to to give them the 411 of how things are going to roll to allow them to practice what it's going to be like to walk on the stage, to get their mic uh, adjusted and check the levels, to learn where should I walk out and where should I walk back backstage after I'm done and is who am I, who's handing it the mic to me and who's like proverbially, who is who am I handing the mic back to? Like, are we going to, am I going to stay on stage and wait for uh, a fist bump and a hug or, and some, some banter, or should I just be walking off? If it's virtual, should I be giving my presentation and then, and then hitting the road? Or are we going to stay for a banter session? There's so many what ifs. And yes, I know you're good. I know you're real good. And I know this isn't your first rodeo being live on stage. And it's still important. It's a sign of respect to your presenters to give them that time so that they know what's going on. And it's a sign of respect to your guests because when you do rehearsals in advance, everything is a little bit tighter. And so we're not wasting their time. I love that. And then also... It's a sign of respect to your team and your vendors. Here's why. Your team and your vendors who have you've hired to support you with this event, they want to do an amazing job for you. They really do. They are as heart-centered and service-oriented as you are. You would like attracts like. And they want to do a phenomenal job. And they need more information from you in order to do that phenomenal job for you. Yes, they can make magic happen and jump through hoops in the moment, but it's super stressful. And why don't we save that adrenaline rush and (laughs) use of cortisol for what it's absolutely needed? Gosh, I had an event once where the power went out. When we do all the rehearsals, obviously not the, the power's not going out at that moment, 
but we're able to iron out all of the other things so that we're in a state of calm and peace and grace under pressure when the real situations that require us to level up and be crystal clear and grace under pressure arise like power going out. So let's not let's not use up unnecessary stress energy on stuff that could have been ironed out in rehearsal. So that's respect, number one. Number two, and I think I think you've gathered this already. You're a smart cookie just like I am. It's less stressful. When we use the time during rehearsals to iron it out, to talk through how that's going to go, it's less stressful during the event. It just keeps things like cool as a cucumber, calm. I I would rather us, you've heard me say this before, feel this sense of like spaciousness and abundance with the amount of time that we have during an event and not feel rushed and stressed and under the gun. It's not a place that anybody wants to work from. And I'm not sure when it ever became okay and cool to be that way during events, but it doesn't have to be that way. I'm just here to say that I've seen a lot of different event leaders produce events, and I've seen it from behind the stage and on the headset and... I know that there's a difference. I know that there are some CEOs who are just better at, they've gotten better at leaders, being leaders. And so they know what level of coaching and instruction is necessary at a time. And that that for an event, it happens during the rehearsal. Okay, I don't expect you to have it all figured out ahead of time. It's not lost on me that you're busy. and You have a million other things going before the event. So let's just use that rehearsal time for what it's there for, which is just figuring it all out. Yeah, figuring it all out. So three, when you allow rehearsals to happen, it frees you up to focus on what matters, which is delivering content which is staying in service, which is staying present to the needs of your guests and how the room feels. I, I wonder, can we be as intuitive to feel the energy of the room and where we need to take our messaging and the content if we're in a high stress state? I think the answer is no. <laughs> So those are my three. It's a sign of respect. It is less stressful. And it allows you to be freed up to focus on what matters. And it frees up the team and other talent to focus on what matters. And bonus, when you allow for rehearsals to happen at the length in which would be ideal, like our multi-day event, probably a full day. I know that sounds just <laughs> horribly luxurious, but it uh, it's necessary. You'd be surprised how you can use that time. Uh, when given enough time, rehearsals are fun. You know, you can just let your hair down, be casual try things on for size. It's fabulous. I love rehearsals. I hope this episode has shed just a little bit light on the topic of rehearsals and why you should invest in them. And has you just a little bit curious on what it would be like if you added them to your next event and just decided that's it's in the run right uh, for the expenses uh, for the event. It's where we want to invest our time and money and attention so that we can deliver with even more excellence for our guests. And I hope you're excited about it (laughs) because I am. (laughs) 
Make it an outstanding rest of the day. Take care. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening to the Green Room Central podcast. If you love this episode, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it to Instagram and be sure to tag at Sarah Faefer and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear or who you'd like to hear from in the future. That'll help me know what to create for you. The number one thing I'm asked by CEOs, whether it's their first event or their 20th, is Sarah, how do I get more butts and seats? And so I put together a guide for you. Head over to fillingevents.com for your free copy of 107 ways to fill your event. I want to help you quickly master event marketing and fill your events, even if you've never done it before. I've scoured the online business world and found 107 of my favorite strategies working right now to fill your next in-person or virtual event. I want you to create the event promotion plan you need from these easy to implement, customizable strategies for free over at fillingevents.com. I appreciate your commitment to leveling up and learning the mindset and strategy of live events. Keep going, keep learning. If you want more, head over to greenroomcentral.com for show notes and all the links from today's episode.